IPAM stands for IP Address Management, and it's just that. It helps us manage our IP addresses. So in a smaller environment where we've got, you know, maybe one or two subnets, it's normally not that big a deal to manage our IP addresses. We could use something like a spreadsheet, just list all the IP addresses out whenever we need to use one. Let's say we're creating a new server called Server 2000. We go to the spreadsheet, we see an IP address that's not used, and we put Server 2000 next to it on the spreadsheet, and then we know, okay, that IP address is being used by Server 2000. And that can work pretty well, but a lot of times that spreadsheet will get outdated because someone will forget to update it. We'll grab an IP address and forget to put the server in, or they'll retire some servers that are no longer used, but forget to update the spreadsheet and remove the server from that particular IP address. So the spreadsheet at that point in time kind of we know it's probably not completely correct and once that's the case we can't trust it then that spreadsheet pretty much becomes useless so that's in a smaller environment in a larger environment where we have like 20 or 30 or more subnets maybe 10 or 20 dns servers or more and a bunch of dhcp servers a spreadsheet definitely is not going to get the job done so in comes ipam and ipam basically lets us specify how our network is laid out. So for example, I'm looking at my IP address subnets here. So we list all of our IP address subnets and we can see how that subnet is utilized. How many IP addresses are available in that subnet? How many have been assigned? And how many are currently being utilized? And we can also see the percentage utilized. So very quickly I can see, okay, is this subnet running at IP addresses and of course none of mine are but it would let me see that. In addition to that we have something called IP address ranges which we're going to be talking more about but a range is basically within a subnet so like 192.168.6.170 to .185 so that's a range we've set aside maybe to allocate to our servers. Well real quickly here I can see if it's overutilized or underutilized, right now it's at an optimal level. And we can actually see trends. If we go down here, we can see one day, you know, seven days, out five years, or a custom range on how the IP addresses are utilized in that particular range. So this would normally be very difficult to do manually. But IPAM does this automatically. Now, let's say we need an IP address to assign to a server. IPAM doesn't just go out and find that server and give it the IP address or it's not like the server magically contacts IPAM and then assigns that IP address to it to the NIC. We still have to go in here and let's say I want an IP address in this range for one of my servers. I can right click on it and go to find and allocate available IP addresses and it will find the next available IP address for me and then I'll list out the host that it's for and that will basically enter it into IPAM. So that piece is kind of similar to a spreadsheet, but it's not going into a spreadsheet, it's going into IPAM. So we can actually see all the IP addresses listed here. So even though we've entered into IPAM, we still have to, again, go over to that server and uh, manually type in that IP address on the server's NIC. So we configure it like we normally would. Now, when we're working with DHCP and DHCP scopes, it does contact the DHCP server. We can we configure it as a managed server, and it automatically imports the DHCP information. So it looks at the scopes, imports the subnets and the, the pools. It imports them as ranges, and whenever a DHCP server hands out a lease for an IP address, it imports that information here and so that we know that those particular IP addresses are in use. So that is an automated piece of it. And as far as DNS goes, we can also manage our DNS servers. And when we do with IPAM, it automatically looks at the, the DNS server and matches up an IP address to any records that are in DNS. So we can see, okay, this IP address has this A record for desktop 205 and also has a pointer record. So that part happens automatically, and it's very, very useful and helpful. In addition to that, we can also integrate it with System Center Virtual Machine Manager. And in Virtual Machine Manager, we can create address pools so that when we deploy virtual machines, it grabs an IP address from the address pool. Well, when we integrate Virtual Machine Manager with IPAM, 
it will automatically tell IPAM that information. So those IP addresses will be automatically entered in here. It's not something we have to do manually. So those are all the great parts of IPAM. Now for a second, let's talk about what it does not do. So as I mentioned earlier, it doesn't automatically configure a server's NIC with a, an available IP address. Now, is that something that we could write a script for? And there are some scripts out there for it. Yes, but that isn't exactly part of IPAM. It also doesn't scour the network to see what IP addresses are used. There's probably IP addresses out on my network that are currently in use, but IPAM thinks they're not in use. So it's still our responsibility as administrators when we need to use IP addresses to go to IPAM to get that IP address. Certainly somebody could still go over, assign a server an IP address, and IPAM wouldn't know about it. Also another thing that it does not do, it doesn't contact the DNS server, get all the records, the A records in DNS, and import those as IP addresses to IPAM. It does not do that. It just works with DHCP in regards to importing IP addresses that are leased and the scopes as ranges. Now, we could also script that out, though, where we contact a, D a DNS server, get all the A records, and then import those to IPAM, but that would be a separate script that does that. Again, that's not natively part of IPAM. So those are a couple things that it doesn't do that we may think it, it does. So that's the primary function of IPAM. Another function is we actually have the ability to manage these DNS and DHCP servers from one place. So if we have a lot of them, it can be difficult to open up a snap-in or add them to a snap-in for each of our DNS servers. Certainly not impossible, but from here, we can manage all of our DNS and DHCP servers. So you can see here, I've got a, a DC01. It has a DHCP role. I can right-click on it. I can edit server properties, create scopes, basically everything I could do from my normal DHCP snap-in. And I can do it all from one place. So that's another great thing about uh, IPAM. So I hope this movie has helped you understand what IPAM is and what it does. If you want to learn more about IPAM in depth on how to set it up and administer it and manage your DHCP servers, DNS servers, please go to itdvds.com where we have that training and a ton of other training, including exam 70-741 training. If you're studying for that, we have practice tests for it. And as a member of ITDVDs.com, you get access to everything.